Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Vision here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 1 from the May 2010 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so the question tells us that below is a list of balances for Peter Jones, a soul trader. Okay, so they give us a nice little list of balances here. So we can see some familiar terms, inventories, accruals. Now, accruals, that could mean accrued revenue or accrued expenses. I think by default, they mean accrued expenses. Fixtures and fittings, bank, capital, loan, repayable, April 2010. Well, that might come into play when we have to decide if it's current or non-current. Debtors or accounts receivable, mortgage, repayable 2015. That's probably going to be non-current. Land and building, cash, creditors or accounts payable, and motor vehicles. Okay, a nice, easy-looking list. Let's see what they want us to do. So it says that we are to prepare Peter Jones' classified balance sheet as at March 31st, 2010, using the order of permanence. Okay, so let's always remember to head up our statements properly. The name of the entity, in this case, Peter Jones. I, I'm using the correct term, statement of financial position. I mean, I have no problem with using the term balance sheet. I will probably use it forever. <laughs> and then as at 31st March 2010. Okay, so of course, we're going to, it says order of permanence. So permanence means long lasting assets first. Now, if you need to check out my playlist with respect to balance sheets and how to prepare them, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check it out. And when you feel more comfortable and ready to tackle this question, you can come back and continue. Okay, for the rest of us who are ready to, ready to go, let's take a look. Okay, so we're going to start with the non-current assets. Now, if we go back across to that list, we're going to see fixtures and fittings. We are also going to see land and building, and we're going to see motor vehicles. So we're going to start with the land and building, and then we're going to hit the fixtures and fittings, and then motor vehicles. If you think motor vehicles are more permanent than fixtures and fittings, by all means, you can rearrange those things. But I'm pretty sure land and buildings is the most permanent out of all three of those non-current assets. We're going to take a total or a subtotal for non-current assets, and then we're going to hit current assets. So what do we have? We have inventories. That's going to go first. Bank. That's going to go maybe last, second to last. Debtors or accounts receivable, definitely. And cash. Cash is going to go last. All right. So it's going to go inventories or stock. Then we're going to go debtors or accounts receivable. Then we're going to hit the bank. And then we're going to hit cash. Right. So that's going to give us a nice subtotal of $198,000, which when we add to the 340, is going to give us $538,000 for total assets. So now we're going to subtract our liabilities and we're going to start with the non-current liabilities because they are more permanent than current liabilities. Now there was only one non-current liability. That was the mortgage payable 2015 of 145000 right? So we're going to put that here and we're going to put the subtotal in the middle. Now, honestly, if there's just one item, you can put it in the middle, but because I want to kind of set a precedent for if we ever have multiple non-current liabilities, we're going to put the details in the leftmost column and then the subtotal in the middle column. Okay, so now we're going to hit up current liabilities. Going back to our list of balances, we're seeing accruals, which we're going to assume is accrued expenses. We're going to put that there as well. There was also the loan repayable April 2010. Now, since the statement of financial position is being drawn up to March 31st, 2010, April 2010 is definitely within less than one year of the, well, the reporting date, the balance sheet date. So that's definitely going to be a current liability. And we have, of course, the creditors or accounts payable, 41,000. So we're going to populate those items in the statement. And we're going to take a subtotal of 54,000, which when added to the 145 for non-current is going to give us 199, I believe. And we're going to subtract the liabilities from the assets. Total assets minus total liabilities gives us net assets, otherwise known as capital, because capital is equal to assets minus liabilities. Now, they did give us a capital figure in the list of balances here. So, of course, we need to show it across here. So, it's going to say finance by capital. And our capital balance is $339,000, right? Okay, now, as you should know, there is more than one way to present a balance sheet, even if it is in the order of permanence. I sort of prefer the net assets approach, but you can also do assets equal to capital plus liabilities, which I'm going to show you now. Okay, so I'm going to put 
the balance sheet that we just did on the left hand side and on the right hand side i'm going to do the other well the balance sheet now with the assets alone on top and then capital plus liabilities below so i'm just going to populate things pretty quickly because it's not like we have to go and reanalyze or reclassify things we're just putting them in in a slightly different order the assets however stay exactly the same but we're going to stop the top section right here at total assets now, assets are the resources that the business uses in order to engage in business activities to earn revenue and subsequently profit. Where do the assets come from? Do we get them for free? No, we don't. We have to pay for them. Where does the money to pay for the assets come from? It comes from either one of two places, the owner via capital or equity capital, or from creditors or people from whom the company borrows money, right? Lenders. And that's classified as liabilities or debt capital. So we're going to see financed by capital and liabilities and the capital balance is the same 339 because that's what the question gave us so now we're going to deal with the non-current liabilities first which was the mortgage of 145 then we are going to deal with the current liabilities i think we had three items the accruals the loan and the creditors giving us 40 54 sorry for 199 right and then when we add that to the 339 above we're going to get the 538,000, which matches with the total assets figure and the balance sheet balances. So again, more than one way to do a balance sheet, right? Uh, okay, so let's proceed with the rest of the question. Okay, so A part two gives us a simple one mark item. Identify the most liquid current asset of the business. The liquidity of an asset or how liquid an asset is, is how easy it is to convert to cash or how near it is to cash. So therefore, in our balance sheet, the most liquid current asset of this business is cash because cash is already in liquid form. Okay, easy enough, on to part B now. So they tell us here that the following transactions which occurred during the year were not recorded by Mr. Jones. So we have a list of six transactions here which I will go through when I'm populating the solution. I'm going to go through all of them now. And they're telling us down here that they want us on the worksheet provided show the effect of the above transactions on the accounts. The first transaction has been done for you for seven months. Okay, so let's pull up the first transaction. It says paid rent of 3000 by check. Now the worksheet that they had, they gave you had transaction in a column and they just numbered it one, two, three, four, five, six. They had accounts affected, the account or accounts to increase and account or accounts to decrease. Now in the first case, if we paid rent by check, we know that rent and bank are affected, right? Whatever we're paying, right, that has to be affected, the rent expense account, and we're paying with a check. So that's why bank is affected. Now, when we pay rent, right, the, the, the rent, I mean, it's incurred. So technically, the, the, we have to debit rent. So the balance in the rent account is going to increase. And of course, we're paying money out of the bank. So bank is going to decrease. So we're going to see that there, right? So account to increase rent and account to decrease bank. Okay, the next transaction, item two. The proprietor paid 600 from the cash account for insurance on his son's car. Okay, so cash is being affected. It's going down because the proprietor is taking cash out of the business for his personal use. Now that's drawings. So cash is decreasing and drawings is increasing. So first of all, we need to populate the column for accounts affected. That's cash and drawings. And drawings is increasing and cash is decreasing. Like I said, the owner is taking out money Right, that means drawings is going up and he's taking out cash, which means cash is going down. Next, item three. It says the business received 5,000 by check as commission. So if the business received money by check, that means bank is affected and it came from commission revenue. So commission revenue is also being affected. So let's put that in. So we're going to see bank and commission. Right now, both of these things happen to be increasing. Because we're getting money, so bank definitely has to increase. And we've earned commission revenue, which means commission revenue has also increased. Okay, item four says that we repaid part of creditors 6,000 by check. So if you repay something by check, bank is affected. And what are we repaying? We're repaying creditors. So creditors is also affected. So let's put that first, right? Creditors and bank. And both of these items are decreasing. Right? Creditors is decreasing because when you pay back your creditors, you are reducing the amount of money you owe them. Your liability is going down. So creditors is decreasing. And we're paying money out of bank. So bank is also decreasing. Right. So we're almost there. Item five says we exchanged a portion of land in settlement of mortgage, $145,000. Now, land and mortgage are the two items being affected and both are decreasing. 
land is decreasing because we are exchanging it to settle the mortgage. So we're giving land. So we are now going to have less. And when we say settle the mortgage, it means we're using the land to pay off the mortgage. So we no longer owe any money on that mortgage, which means, of course, the mortgage is decreasing. And the last item we have here is that Mr. Jones sold inventory costing $5,000 to a friend for $4,500 in cash. So inventory and cash are definitely going to be affected. And how? So if we sold it for cash, cash is going to increase and we're selling stock. So therefore stock or inventory has to be decreasing. So increase cash, decrease inventory. Okay, now there's one more part of this question. Let's take a look at what they want us to do. So B part two says, calculate the new balance in the bank account given the above transactions, right? Okay, so we're going to pull back up those transactions. And of course, we're going to head up our statement properly. Peter Jones, calculation of new bank balance after the above transactions. So the balance in the bank was $38,000. Now, one by one, the first item says paid rent of $3,000 by check. So if you paid rent with a check, it means your money is coming out of the bank. So we're going to have to subtract that. So you see less rent payment. Okay, item two says the proprietor paid 600 from the cash account for, his ins for insurance on his son's car. Now, if it's from the cash account, bank isn't affected. Next, it says the bank received 5,000 by check as commission. So we receive $5,000, which means our bank account balance is going to go up. Next, it says repaid part of creditors by check, $6,000. So if we are paying, that means money is coming out. So that's going to be a subtraction. Uh, next item five says exchange a portion of land in settlement of mortgage. Bank wasn't affected by that item. And the last item here, Mr. Jones sold inventory for cash. So bank also wasn't affected there. So all we have to do is run the arithmetic, calculate the food, and we're going to get a balance or a new balance after transactions or bank balance after transactions, $34,000. And that's the end of this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question one from the May 2010 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and please be sure to check out my website where there's some pretty useful free PUA handouts. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.